e.net.au slash Australia Votes. Elections in the wealthy South East Melbourne electorate of Goldstein are usually pretty predictable. The seat's been held by the Coalition for decades. But this time, the sitting Liberals being forced to fight thanks to the arrival of one of the so-called Teal Independents. Ashley McGee reports. Welcome to Goldstein, where the sun is rising on one of the fiercest battles this election. Morning. Hello. Morning. Morning. This is a grassroots community campaign. People are so excited about it and more people are joining every day and the community wants something different. Yeah, nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. See ya. We're not running an AstroTurf campaign. Ours is based on a long period of hard work connected to the community and support because we represent the values of the community. We're not trying to change the community. The sitting MP Tim Wilson is facing a well-funded challenge from Zoe Daniel. She's one of those so-called teal independents and she's a former ABC journalist. We once worked together in the same newsroom. The fact that they've put a lot of effort into campaigning there and spending a lot of money tells you that the seat is in play. Tim Wilson is fighting for a third term as the member for Goldstein. Uh, well, thanks everybody and good morning. Um, and uh, back, what are we, week three? Four. Four. It's the first time his seat is seriously under threat. I've never taken the seat for granted. I've always worked very closely. And it's really one of those times where the six years of hard work all comes back because people know who I am. They know what I stand for. They know I've done the work. Oh, hi, Pamela. Tim Wilson calling your local federal member of parliament. How are you? Oh, good. There is one thing that's different at this election, uh, and this time we've got one so-called independent candidate spending $1.2 million from external funding in their own right to try and saturate and buy our community like it's an acquisition in a trust fund. Two kilometres down the road, Zoe Daniels' Brighton campaign office is bustling. What we'd like to do, we normally start off with uh, sort of highlights of uh, the week that we've had. I never expected to run for politics and I, I certainly wouldn't have run for either of the major parties. I think with the background that I have, I am a good fit for this. It may be a grassroots campaign, but it's swimming in big money. We've raised just over 1.2 million and about 470,000 of that, when I last looked, was from Climate 200. Climate 200 is the lobby group funding many of the independent candidates. It has no impact on my policy positions. But at Zoe Daniels' morning campaign meeting, there's a familiar face at the table. Climate 200's media advisor, Jim Middleton, was in your meeting this morning. So that's a very close relationship. Well, no, Jim Middleton is, works on my campaign. He, Jim Middleton is my political advisor. Who's paying him? Our campaign is paying Jim Middleton. But Jim Middleton also works for Climate 200. It's a separate relationship and this is on the public record. Jim Middleton is a person that I've known for 30 years. He's a, been a trusted mentor to me. So to an outsider that looks like there's not much independence from Climate 200. I'm quite strong-willed uh, so I can stand up for myself and, and I'm not feeling any pressure from Climate 200 via anyone to do what they want. Right. OK, team. Zoe Daniel is publishing most donations on her website, but Tim Wilson won't reveal his until he's legally required to after the election. What's your campaign budget this time around? Well, we don't talk about dollars, but I can tell you that we're not far off where we normally are. Why don't you want to talk about money? Why? Well, because uh, we, don't want to, we don't normally reveal our campaign budget, but I can assure but you... We're talking about your opponent and you're saying she's spending $1.2 million. Well... She's bragging about it. But how do we know you're not spending the same? Uh, well, because you can see we're not buying you know, billboards all along the Nepean Highway. It's all automated, yeah. The Liberal first preference votes have been above 50% in Goldstein for decades. What the independents have to do in a seat like Goldstein is force the Liberal vote under 50%, force it to preferences. And you've got to force it under 45, so an independent who gets, say, 
30, 35% of the vote can win on preferences. So it's a two-stage process. Individual seat polls aren't always accurate, but one this week had the two candidates neck and neck on the primary vote. The Greens and Labor have preferenced the independents. Labor's are also running a candidate here, Martin Abbott, but he's missing in action. Hello, leave a short message and a contact number and I'll call you back soon. He cancelled on 7.30, just hours before filming. Well, we've left a few messages for him now. Hopefully this time he calls us back. The only sign we found of him was this one hanging from his family home. We'll kick things off with um, Martin Abbott from the Australian Labor Party. But he did attend a climate debate last week. In terms of some of the issues that the community is raising, a big one is climate change. Is net zero dead? Oh, that's absurd. Uh, we've given ironclad commitment to net zero by 2050. The best thing that, uh, well, frankly, the, the community can do to make sure there's stronger action on climate change is to send me back to Canberra. But how does, because... that, get, how does that get stronger action? That gets the same action. The best thing we can do to cut greenhouse gas emissions is put in place practical steps for delivery. I would like Zoe to tell me what... Zoe Daniels also facing trouble over a letter she co-signed criticising the Israeli government's treatment of journalists. So he's saying we're wrong and she realises now. But you're saying essentially the issue here was how the letter was received, not how it was intended. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, no. I mean, I think you're trying to turn it into a binary thing. I signed the letter for particular reasons. Um, the way the letter was framed was not ideal. <laughs> But this is a campaign in full flight. All right, that's, uh, that's very mature of you. Very, mate. Both candidates say it's been a dirty campaign and their homes have been targeted. There is active digging of dirt by those who don't want me to win to try to destroy my reputation. They're all piling in and I know that they don't like my campaign against retiree tax at the last election. I get that that makes me a target. You think it's a revenge campaign? Resolutely it's a revenge campaign. The seats that independents have won in the last decade like Indi and Warringah both had MPs who were unpopular or had been there a long time. The question with Goldstein, does Tim Wilson fit in that category? Today, the